I'll, I might lose, but we'll fight. But it will give it a shot. Yeah. It's for money. <laughs> I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Shop. My name is Mikey, and this video is sponsored by Masterworks. You more. should invest in art. Yes, more. More, more on them later. Uh, today we have a couple subjects here. You went to an authorized dealership of watches, yes. very large. Massive, yes. And, it, and, and your recap of it brought up basically three main points. One, a very surprising... Uh, disappointment. Disappointment yeah. from a brand that you love very much. A very a disappointed. You might be their only fan in America. <laughs> uh, two, yes. maybe the reality behind the Rolex waitlist and you finally got a, an AD to be honest with you for once because people have people have been very nice to you but this guy was honest this guy you. this guy was honest it, we'll get into it later but there's a good reason why he's honest and then the third was just blatant mutilation of watches uh, which I would say verges on the side of of deceptive no no is deceptive and verges on the side of like a little bit of fraud to be honest uh so let's get into today's conversation we walk in we're not even at rolex yet we walk in i go to zenith immediately yes because i'm a huge fan of zenith i have my revival shadow which is oh, you're the fan of zenith i i'm the <laughs> Oh, got, it's you! I got roasted when I was showing a guy my Zenith collection. He said, oh, you're, you're the guy that likes Zenith. But um, I love the Revival Shadow. I went to see the Chrono Master original. Incredibly disappointed. Really? Yep. Not getting one. Never going to consider getting one again. I thought you liked that watch. Until I saw it in the metal. What? It's you know why? In inferior to this. By, uh, I don't even see you're how... like, it, no, genius, it's better. I just, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just mean now. Yeah. I don't even see how it made it to production. Really? Yeah. That's disappointing. It is, it is beautiful in photos. It is so long. Yes. The lugs are so long and so thick, it it doesn't wear well at all. I don't think it would wear well on anyone. Really? No offense if you have one, I'm sure it wears well on you specifically. On you specifically, it looks It great. looks amazing. Um, That's really Dude, interesting. I, I was so let down. I feel like everybody that I was with, like the guy showing us the watch, the other guy, other guy I was walking around with were like, Michael's upset. Wow. I was like, this is horrible. That is bad. It didn't sit on my wrist. This is a 40 millimeter watch. I have no idea. This is a large watch. Yeah. Sits on my wrist fine. Wow. That's so interesting. Incredibly like that. And down. you're a huge Zenith guy. That's kind of funny. I, that, was the, that was one of the watches I was like, I'll definitely probably get that soon. The second realization at this AD, and I wasn't there, but the report that I got was that there was a price on a pre-owned watch. Yeah. A Vacheron Constantin. Oh, we overseas. haven't even gotten into prices yet. Yeah. They are. Oh, so my it was, God. I think it was 65. No, that, it was 76,000. 76,000. And the salesperson said, no, but the real price is in the 50s. Yeah. First of all, <laughs> I, yes, I understand discounts. I give discounts. Everyone gives discounts. I mean, unless you own like this super desirable watch. But barring this odd circumstance where you can't get a Rolex and you pay premiums, you always get a little bit of a discount when you buy a luxury, you know, watch, sure, right? Sure. That 5%. is five percent. Oh my god! You can't go if you say the price is seventy five, and before I even press you, you tell me, well, the real price is fifty five. I'm gonna say, well, what? why do you have it at seventy five? Yeah. Oh, that's not even the worst one. Why then. do you have it there? So were you waiting for like a jerk off to walk in? Because that would be like if I was the salesperson, well, I would level with me and be like, "Listen, we were hoping a jerk off would walk in. You're not a jerk off. Maybe if you know any jerk offs, send them in." And that's very Staten Island. That's how I a think, Staten Island Rolex shop would go. I think I had the pass because he knew who I was. Okay, you know what I'm saying? right. Because you would have cringed hard. I was cringing at everything else already. Wow. Which shout out to this guy. He was very honest, and I'm sure he makes a ton of sales. He's yes. fantastic. Yes. I like, could not. Well, I mean, it's, it's almost like he's not controlling price. That salesperson is just being remarkably honest. Okay, before we get into your very honest interaction with a Rolex uh, AD, uh, you know, a salesperson, yeah, yeah. for once, uh, a quick message from our friends over at Masterworks. Yeah. Our relationship with Masterworks started uh, just as a conversation about, really through through a point of contact, about the Rolex market or the watch market, yeah. and kind of trying to predict its future, and it was rather volatile, and really things had not been doing all that well. I mean, same with the market. Sa uh, same with the market. Yeah. Um, and they said, well, actually, have you taken a look at other you know, another luxury, you know, collectible market. Take a look at the art market. And they started to educate me, and now we'll do for you, uh, on the 
what I, I, for me, totally unsuspecting the success of this market uh, to date. As you know, probably with this year, the average retail portfolio is down around 30% this year. But even with inflation being high, contemporary art has appreciated at an average rate of 13.5%. It's unbelievable. I, I've been at a lot of auctions, watch auctions, which are often uh, really kind of, honestly, the small event compared to the art auctions, yeah. uh, particularly at the big auction houses. You know, and I, and I didn't go for the art, but we've seen it. And wow, the numbers in the watch market, which I thought were large, are baby numbers. These are baby events yes. compared to the art market. I'll even go so far as to say that the success of a lot of these auction houses has been in trying to put these two auctions next to each other and not put their watch clients into the art room, but try to tell the art people, oh, go take a look at the watch auction, because that's where the big boys are. Right. And that's clearly what we've seen here. And as you know, as we discussed, obviously with inflation going up, everything is getting affected, but there are still massive art sales happening, including Paul Allen's collection, whose collection sold for a collective $1.5 billion. Unbelievable. I mean, talk about a liquidation event. Oh it's, my it's God. crazy. I mean, we're talking about real blue chip art. Not obscure uh, artists and bets that they're going to try and find. No, but. no. Masterworks is talking about the big names. You know, obviously Picasso, Banksy, uh, Monet. Uh, they're talking, again, blue. it's blue chip names, reliable, exactly, yeah. historical names that people uh, flock to, you yeah. know, if, if they can afford. And the reality is that most individuals can't afford these pieces of art. They're so let's break it up into shares and it, make it an actual way exactly to Exactly right. Fractional ownership is a phenomenal idea that came mm -hmm. at the right time for the art market. Yeah. Uh, frankly, I think that a lot of people wish we got in even sooner, um, but 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 now is you know never too late. Yeah. Right. Masterworks' last three sales have delivered 13.9%, 17.8%, and 21.5% net returns to investors. Wild, huh? Wild. And with all the market chaos, demand to get into Masterworks is only growing. So yes. you can skip the wait list by using our link below and get yes. into it. I highly recommend you go ahead and, and skip the wait list and join Masterworks and really get involved in this in this flourishing market uh, because it's just, I mean, it's wild. Agreed. And this is when we'll get into the Rolex conversation, but I said to him, um, you know, how stupid is it, how pointless is it to, for me to put my name on the list for a Daytona? Totally pointless. He was like, you just, you don't have the purchase history. You'll just like, you will never get a call. He was like, if, if you're on the list, like it, it is not, for you it is not real. Right. Unless you were going in and you were going to decimate this store. So interesting. He's like, it is, it is literally a gift. It is not for you. You will never get one. Wow. So I was like, okay. I appreciate the honesty. <laughs> I know, I know. I, but okay. just that bluntness of being like, no, you won't. You will not Forget get a call. It. I don't care if it's in 20 years. You will never get a call. Wow, how nuts. So then I said, okay, what about like a Samariner? And he was like, honest, obviously I'd love the commission. Uh, there's another something happening down here where you probably have a higher chance of getting one. And I was like, I'm not in a rush. Like, I, you know, you've been great. He went to every boutique and took out every watch and talked no about it in detail. I felt horrible I didn't buy a watch. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to buy a Doxa just to say thank you. But he was like, I would love the commission. This is where you'll probably, you know, you have a better chance, like being honest. And I was like, I don't care. I was like, I get all the time in the world. And he was like, well, you know, I'd really go to the other place. And I was like, dude, literally, the timeline is is decades. Right. I, was, I don't care. Yeah. And he was like, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. Wow. You're not going to Rolex Samaria, you were never going to get not it. Not going to happen. You were never going to get it. How nuts is Do that? Do you know how infuriating that That's is? That's crazy. As I'm holding... A watch that is also incredibly overpriced, which we'll get into in a second. Yeah. But that honesty is very appreciated. But the knowledge of that is infuriating. To me, it's a, just a massive... And it's not a flaw because it's done on purpose, I feel like, for the most part. When you, we talk about prices in a second. Well, there are plenty of things that are done on purpose that are still flaws. Right? Oh, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, know. yeah. But I was just like... That is the literally the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. And I was like, can I see just the exhibition Ceramic Daytona? Mm. We don't have one. Can't see it. I'm in one of the most renowned watch ADs in the world. This store must must be I don't even know how much per month just to sit there. Oh please. And you Insane. can't get you can't get a exhibition Daytona. Unbelievable. I've never had first hand experience what? in that, but I was like, this is ridiculous. Because it's not a mom and pop AD. So they've got corporate rules and that's it. Like you're not going to get a you're not going to treat one of the salespeople well and get a kind salesperson to surprise you with a watch. Ain't happening. No. This is a corporate decision, and if they give you that watch, which they probably don't even have the authority to do, even if you wanted to buy them, you couldn't, but 
you know, that's it. I mean, it's, it's you just don't qualify. Flat out, no, flat out, no, you're not going to get it. That's it. In a, in a very sad, defeated voice, like, like to be I'm honest sorry with you, man, right. it is impossible for you to get that watch. Wow. If you want to buy Tudors and Grand Seikos yeah. and IWCs and this and that for a year away, you know, spend 50, 80,000, you might get a Submariner. Wow. Are you kidding me? I'm nuts. Do you know how much that devalues Rolex to me? I'm like, oh, so you guys suck. And yet, and yet, it makes it, it, it's it's worked so well in making it so successful. I yeah. I hate that it works well because yeah. I've seen things on Reddit online where people are like, "I spent one hundred twenty thousand at this AD. I'm so excited! I finally got my ten thousand dollar watch." Out of here. Yeah, and even with the oh whole, like, my God. a lot of it's been done with the engagement ring thing. You know, I know that a lot of ads will say, "Well, oh, he is twenty eight. Mm-hmm. We like twenty eight years old, twenty eight year old guys. Yep, twenty eight year old guy. He's getting engaged soon. He could be a friend of ours." I've seen this. They'll bring them in. You know, oh, they'll talk. You know, do you have a girlfriend? And all of a sudden, oh and now God. keep in mind, and I'm, I'm interested to, to, to know what's, you know, culturally, what, what is more normal outside of, you know, metropolitan areas. And I assume that it's, it's like, I maybe this is the most ignorant thing in the world. I'm assuming that an engagement ring, you know, in non-metropolitan areas, in regular places, is I mean, is it a thousand dollars? Is it two thousand dollars? Engagement ring. If you save up, if it's if it's a crate. I mean, culturally, would you even buy something that's five thousand? I have no idea. But I'll tell you right now that in New York, and I imagine in Chicago, in major cities, um, you know, materialistic places where it's a lot of keeping up with the Joneses. I'll tell you that my friends who drop thirty grand on a ring, they are, they are not impressing anyone. Yes, I no. see it. I see it in first hand everywhere. You 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 drop thirty grand in a ring, and that is your ticket to just not be embarrassed. Yeah. If you play in that world, never mind if, the wedding. If I get engaged, if I ever get engaged, I am going to say, "You want to do a little gold band over here?" Because I'm not competing with anybody. Exactly. Okay? Yeah. I don't care. Everyone knows I have more money. You're than like, that. I don't even, even get friends. to wear the mean, ring. I don't. I don't mean. You know, I, I don't even. Yeah, of course. I just be, and and if I didn't, nothing that I tell my friends. You know, my my buddies. You're who are you impre- you're, you're you're impressing your jerk off friend? Yeah, like right. I know him. He's you're a jerk impressing off. simple man Sam. Yeah, right. But <laughs> I tell Sam that all the time. Like my, my buddy Sam, I mean, literally my, my best friend in the world. I love this guy dearly. He makes a good living. Mm-hmm. But you know, yes, could he spend? Could he squirrel away thirty thousand uh, dollars? Meaning, when I say squirrel yeah, away, yeah. meaning it's like. Uh, uh, money that would have been spent on his own personal pleasure, right? While still putting money in his, you know, stock account. Yeah, yeah. Could you scroll away thirty grand? Yeah, you could do it. To waste it on 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 this ridiculous, materialistic thing. Oh well, watches are materialistic. Yeah, and you can. F- and sell them when you're bored. You could sell them if you're in a pinch. You're going to tell your girlfriend, hey, by the way, uh, sell the engagement ring. You can't do it. Not to mention the $30,000 engagement ring is worth like 11 it. fucking grand. Not to mention the only thing that she makes is mushroom surprise. <laughs> <laughs> That's my girlfriend. That's a callback to another video yeah, where Kristen said Sally's favorite dish to make is a mushroom surprise. You know what the surprise. surprise is? And I'm not eating it. Uh, <laughs> you're like, look at the ring on your finger. Yeah. I'm I, kidding. I'm I kidding. would not do it. Same thing with weddings. I know we're getting tendential here, but the same thing with weddings. If you want to have a beautiful, I'm not talking to rich people i'm talking to regular folks that that are squirreling away money i'm talking about to regular some people, people thirty thousand dollars is nothing but to it, most people it's that not nothing. Is, it's actually quite a bit of money yes you know yes uh you know weddings i know people regular people with regular incomes spend eighty five thousand on a wedding ninety five thousand on a wedding i know rich people that spend two million and it meant nothing to them two million to them is like i go to the supermarket i pick up a it's literally sandwich, we've met know? so many people where they could fund my entire life oh, it would, and not never know. feel it. Yeah, and no, not you could live know. on their credit card, they'd never feel it. Yes. But but uh, uh, regular folks, like you know, regular people, right? I was gonna say like I said, you know, it's kinda you know, but regular people. How stupid are you? How susceptible are you to peer pressure that you are ready to put yourself in such financial jeopardy that you need a hug, my man? Oh, you do need a kiss? You know, now on the flip side, there's a utility sometimes in appearing to be the guy. Of course. I get that. Of course. Real estate agents drive nice cars. Yes. I know that. Uh, if I drive up to a client's house, I park a block away. Right. But not joking. Right, no, but yeah, not joking. Right, right. Um, you know, I, I get that. But I'm just talking about just for the sake of impressing your friends, f that, man. That. So here's the question before we get into the, the actual mutilation. Do you ever think you'll actually get married? No. <laughs> You're like, no, I, I hope so. What? I. <laughs> I like how you had to reassure yourself. Yeah, I really hope so. It, it's, it's in the cards. So here's the question. It's for someone, and I'm asking 
because you know people that do this, so you have more insight. For someone that does go to these ADs to drop that much money on rings, on whatever it may be, to then get a Rolex, is it because they want that Rolex or is it because you got a Rolex? Is it the status of you acquired it and now no. you have it? It's com- or is it? 100%. No one wants it. No. Who's going to drop $200,000 no. no. for a tool or to a tool watch? For a Mariner. It's ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. It's absurd. Um, it's it's, it's yeah. just ADs being like, I, if you want it, you got to just... I it's have to insane. basically take advantage of you very openly and honestly. It's insane. It's truly insane. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a social experiment. I mean, it's it's a field day for a psychotherapist. It's you just know? lining I mean, it's these people's day. pockets. It's just insane. insane. Because it's not... If it didn't work, it wouldn't happen. And it, it works work, it very well. That's to right. the point where Rolex is giving CPO watches yes. back to clients who are listing them for $70,000. Yes. It's much more impressive to me that Rolex has been so successful for so long without that supply and demand you know hustle mm-hmm. for years everyone still wanted a rolex everyone wanted a rolex rolex was always the, the status symbol i i said it, you know it was the brand of the greener grass mm-hmm. you know yeah uh 100 percent. you know um and you always wanted one and you could walk into the store any day and buy one in theory but you know you couldn't afford it so sure. you didn't buy one yeah and uh and 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 the desire never ended yeah. You, if you got it at 40, 50, 60, 70, I know guys that never got it. And one day their son bought it for them, I think in the 70s, you know, mm-hmm. because just culturally at the time as well, like older executives, a lot of them felt very good about the whole, you know, they became part of the wealthy culture. And a lot of guys that came from normal backgrounds never felt comfortable in those shoes too. Sure. Even the idea of spending ten thousand dollars on a watch, they were like, nah, I don't know, I just. Don't I feel that's like a that's, lot of money. And that's a, that's a you know my friend down you know in D.C. you know who I'm talking about if you're watching, mm-hmm. and uh, you know his father-in-law was a wealthy guy, a completely wealthy guy, could have afforded any Rolex he wanted. Uh, you would never buy one, so they gifted him one, mm-hmm. and that is a tremendous symbol. You know, it's I a mean, symbol that's almost it's you can. You can get a used watch, a certain model, cheaper, but it's a symbol of just universal, I achieve something, mm-hmm. and this is the watch that shows yes. it. This is the crown. Yes. We, we did recently a film where we interviewed basically just a line of rich people, like mm-hmm. in a row, in and out. Mm-hmm. Every single one of them could buy any watch they want. Mm-hmm. Nine out of ten of them had a Rolex on. Yeah, 100%. It's that symbol. 100%. And it's just, it's just so disgustingly... I, I, it, it, What's the right word? Disgustingly, like, you're just taking advantage of everyone now. Well, it's funny. Like, I, I'll sit at a restaurant, you know, uh, in the city or really any expensive restaurant. And you look around and you see a lot of different, you know, a lot of different expensive items. And yet the only, like, there are, in the room, there are dozens, dozens of super expensive brands. Mm-hmm. And yet there's really, there are really only maybe two or three consistent items. Mm-hmm. And one above all, and it's Louis Vuitton. Of course, um, Gucci's very popular. Yeah. If you're in a super rich area, you get Hermes. Yep. Okay. And these are all things that women generally have. Sure. Uh, and on the wrist, it's a Rolex of almost everybody. Yep. Yeah, you get a guy with an AP, hundred percent. Sure. I'm just, I'm just talking sure. about you know in in those rooms, it is by far the most present brand. Mm-hmm. By far, yeah, because men and women have them. Yes, it's insane. It's yeah. if, if this room has one thing in common, it's Rolex. Exactly, it's f- exactly. nuts. Yeah, it's nuts. And it's just so crazy. Like, it's a, you going in to buy your dad a watch, and they're like, "Well, it goes for ten grand," and you're like, "Okay," and like, "But you'd pay, you'd pay 20 You're like, well, "I don't want to," but it's for my dad. They're like, right. "Well, you probably you, pay fifteen. You love your dad, right? I mean, or you pay twenty-five. Yeah. And you're like. I guess. I, I could. Yeah. Like, okay, then you'd pay forty. You're like, <laughs> I could. They're like, okay, well then you could pay the forty, or you could buy eighty thousand dollars worth of other things, yeah. and we'll give you one. How nuts! It's right? just so gross. But anyway, the finale, the mutilation. So, uh, mutilation. Let me. <laughs> that seems to be something that you're discussing with me a lot lately. <laughs> I can just see like Sam, like my buddy Sam, who's a simple guy, you know. You know, like you has know, Sam ever made a comment that on every video we talk about him, we say <laughs> Sam's, Sam's a simple guy. <laughs> We're like Sam wakes up in the morning happy, which that's how you know we he's don't a do that. Guy. <laughs> Miserable. You know, like like Sam will use synonyms uh, a lot, sure. but uh, you know how like synonyms 
often are not like they're not totally equal they have different connotations yeah he'd be like yo i destroyed her right you could say that's a college bro thing sure. like yo i mutilated her. <laughs> and you're like, like yo, what the f- did you do limb from limb you're like what <laughs> what what oh i don't have a lot of cape slang but sometimes i just say sentences incorrectly or pronounce things incorrectly yes. that it's, you're just like what like what periwinkle well, now I know it's a baby snail, but I didn't know that. It's a, I, I, I don't know if anyone else calls it periwinkle outside of the Cape, but th- so. that's why you call the tiny little snails and you hum to get them out of the shell. You hum and they come out? Yeah. If you, you get them on your hand, they're obviously in the shell, and if you hum to them, they come out like that. Wow. Yeah. I got a snail that if you hum... <laughs> <laughs> I looked at two Daytonas. Yes. How much does a Zenith Daytona go for around? Do you know? Um, good question. You know, I'm a, no, I, I, I'm a little bit out of, hold on, let's pull it up. Also, sorry for my nose being itchy. I know someone's going to comment about it. I think it's when I'm warm, it gets itchy. Michael, I don't care. I care. I care, Very okay. Much. And everyone, he knows I care. Uh, Zenith Daytona seem to be on the retail market in the high 20s, which mean that it means that I probably could get one in the low 20s. Okay. I go there. I saw two Daytonas. I saw a black dial and a white dial. The yes. Zenith Daytona I saw was... Not in good condition. Very, very heavily polished. The black dial. Mm. First of all, that shouldn't even happen. You, you, oh, I, wait, wait, wait. Because okay. we're going to get into the, the disgusting part. So, I'm looking at it. $42,000. So, That's they're, char- they're charging a, a, you know, a 30% premium, basically, for the, for the AD. Okay. That's a price, right? And not in a good condition. Nothing sharp. That's unacceptable. Nothing sharp. Oh, we haven't gotten to the unacceptable one. Oh, God. Nothing sharp. And I'm just talking to the guy, and they're like, well, people, you know, they want the Rolex, and they want it to be shiny. The top yes. of Rolex is brushed. Yes. They want it shiny. So they actually do it? The top, the first one was not. That was, oh, that yeah. still had some brushing, but it was over-polished. The oh, lugs are, on. you know, not sharp, not pointy. Yes. But you're like, ooh, this is not the correct shape of the watch. Then we go downstairs, non-Zenith Daytona, $33,000. Wow, that's way overpriced. I was offered one the other day for seventeen. When I say the watch was a literal polished ball, it's terrible. I and I, I was just looking at it, and I was like, if I was gonna offer, if I was actually right now considering this watch, I would offer you ten thousand dollars. Right. It was. I'm buying a problem. It was a hands. mirror ball. It was the ends like this. Disgusting. Destroyed. Piece and and his comment was just. 904L gets shinier when you polish it, yeah. and people want shine. They don't care. Wow. And I was looking at that, and I was like, so not only are you just gouging people with these prices, but at the same time, you you're are garbage. you're garbage, dude. It's insane. Round. It looks like a, uh, someone on Reddit said uh, on a similar watch. Like it looks like a bar of soap. That's disgusting. That's insane. The soap. I mean, I don't wear soap. <laughs> I'm like, you know, you wash with soap. You don't wear soap. Sally says it all the time. Sally, if Sally comes over in the morning and she'll, you know, come over and she's like, oh my God, go take a shower. What did you do? You just oh laugh. I sweat, when I, I sweat when I eat. What are you talking about? <laughs> you smell like, like sweat and urine. Disgusting. You're like, what's wrong with you? So are we... She gets me soap. What? Really? really? Sally brings soap to my apartment once a week. Wow. Bars of soap. I'm just trying to think of what direction... Do I the- smell? Do you like smell from? Well, what am I supposed to say? Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> I was like, oh my Believe god, me. no one I have me. so much money I bet on that this works out, I'd have to tell you if you smell good. <laughs> Sally tells me sometimes, you know, if Sally's I'll say also something. very close to your body. Yes. Yeah. I assume. I don't know. I understand, you know, charging premium prices, you know, you're you are paying for an experience, right? Sure. I can sell a Daytona, like a lot of other online dealers, for a hell of a lot cheaper than a big AD can sell a Daytona. Of course, right? of course. They, yeah, I don't have a big fancy store. I don't have, you know, ten God, employees. God knows how many hundreds of thousands. Of how can I help you? How can I help you? Right. It's crazy. So I understand that they, you know, it's not apples to apples. Sure. Uh, so I get the I get the ten thousand dollar premium, but and no one's getting rich off that ten thousand dollar premium. No. But, um, and it's and it's servicing a certain client because there are a hell of a lot of clients out there that would never go online buy Daytona for a dealer they don't know, and they would love to walk down the street to their AD and pay ten thousand more. Of They'd course. love that. Of course. So that it's not even robbery. That part's not even the robbery part. The robbery part to me is they are trusting you. They are trusting that you have the top quality product. They're happy to pay the premium, but they're trusting top quality product. And if you're not delivering that, that to me, now you have found yourself in a, I think that's the moral pickle. That the premium is not the moral pickle. 
the deception. I think it is deception. That is a strong word, but I think mm-hmm. it's deception. Um, because yes, may people like the shinier watch more. It's possible. But with a little bit of education, I have a hard time believing that all of your clients would prefer the shitty watch. Well, I have a hard time believing that. Because then the thought I had was, oh, it's funny that you don't have an exhibition Daytona out. Mm. Oh. You see what I'm saying? You don't want to compare it. Can I see this? Can I see this? Wow, this wow, one. Wow, this is way different. That's Because wow. that was the one watch. Both Daytonas that I saw, I saw all the Daytonas that were out were like that. I can even see as a brand strategy, you know, you always keep one over-polished Daytona in the back. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe, 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 you know, Jennifer Coolidge walks in and she wants a new Rolex. She looks at it and she goes, I don't know. It's so, you know. Shop. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, well, we actually have a, a one we just freshly polished. Yeah. You know, some collectors don't like this, but I think it's more beautiful. This it way. shines better. Okay, fine. Sure. Done. That's nuts, huh? Oh, I, I was beyond disgusted. The guy was amazing. Amazing guy. Amazing. Yeah, I don't go to uh, I don't go to a lot of ads. I, I I almost walked into an ad yesterday. I had a couple minutes to burn, and I just I was like, you know what? I'm not even gonna go. I, I was I I could see you. Everyone should go if you're gonna buy a watch because that Zenith I would have purchased online mm-hmm. immediately and then mm-hmm. been super disappointed. But make sure you're educated to a certain degree because you'll get wrecked. Head on over to London Jewelers Manhasset location because they are a fantastic ad. Yes, but you really got to go, and they even do a. Small pre-owned selection. You know why? You know why they're phenomenal? Because Zach, the nephew, I believe, who sources those watches, is a ridiculous watch geek and is obsessed with vintage watches. So he's uh, like, that just won't go. It just can't be here. And he'll buy stuff that he knows is just like interesting. Like yeah, he'll right. buy a complicated, like a complicated Paddock pocket watch, mm-hmm. and like, yeah, maybe someone will come in and buy it one day. But like, how cool is it to have? How like, cool is it to store? have it? Yeah, right, right. Just to show people. So anyway, that's they have a very small, very small, you know, booth there. But really, the store is just a fantastic AD for a bunch of brands. So head on over for sure. But um, that's it. That's it, dude. Wow. I know. I'm not going to an AD anytime soon.